dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on more than 1,300 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Angela Lansbury in The House on Lakewood Drive, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now here is your producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where the cinema world's finest motion picture talent gathers for your weekly entertainment. Angela Lansbury is our proudly we hail star. In our bright comedy, The House on Lakewood Drive, Angela portrays a novice writer with grandiose ambitions. Her try for the literary jackpot and the realization of her dreams supplies us with some delightful comedy situations. We'll have the curtain for act one of our play in just a moment. But first, Wendell Niles. Friends, let's just stop a minute and think about our men in uniform. Our Army and Air Force men are spreading democracy throughout the world. Wherever stationed, they are demonstrating by their actions that the American way of life is proving best. Our soldiers and airmen are unofficial ambassadors of goodwill, and each one has the gratitude and respect of his fellow Americans, for they know a career in the U.S. Army or U.S. Air Force is one of the finest today. And now, once again, our producer. It's curtain time, and here's Act One on The House on Lakewood Drive, starring Angela Lansbury as Kathy Lane. It all happened more than ten years ago, when Kathy Lane decided to write the great American novel. You'd not picture Kathy Lane as a woman novelist, not even in the making. She looked more like a cover girl. But on the morning our story begins, all the signs of the budding author were there. Manuscript paper, thesaurus, dictionary, yes, and the inevitable typewriter, which at the moment is a triumphant sound. Triumphant indeed. T-H-E-E-N-D. <laughs> the end, the end. Oh, Irene, yeah, Irene, it's Kathy, finished. What's all the shouting for? Look, it's the end. It's really finished. Finished, I tell you, my novel. Well, I didn't think you'd been baking a pie. It's about time. About time? I've only been a year on it. A year. And all you've got to show for it is a bunch of white paper with little black letters on it. Listen to you, a bunch of white paper with little black letters. Let me tell you, those little black letters spell magic. They spell fame and money. Oh, money, that we could use. They spell all my life and all my hopes and all my dreams. If they could spell out hamburger, it'd be more to the point. With onions. And French fried potatoes. And a big <gasps> salad and rope for cheese press. Oh, toasted French bread and garlic. <laughs> oh, Irene, you big dope. I think if you were starving, you'd make a joke of it. What do you mean, if we were starving? Sister, in just about an hour and 80 cents from now, we'll be at the complete mercy of our creditors. I am going to take my manuscript right down to Todd Farrell and Sons Publishers. I'll bet within 24 hours they're back waving a contract at me. Mm, that's okay with me, but I prefer dollar bills. In fact, I'd settle for even one. Irene, are we as badly off as that? <laughs> Worse. Grocery man won't even trust us for a stale soda cracker. We owe two months back rent. We're behind with the gas bill, the light bill, and the telephone's already turned off. Oh, Irene, you never told me. Well, honey, all I wanted was to see that novel finished. It is. Now we can start worrying about the eating and sleeping problem. Well, I certainly didn't dream things were as bad as all that. Well, I can go to my sister-in-law's, the one without a leash. But where can I go? Oh, well, you might crawl in through the window of the house on Lakewood Drive. That is, if the for sale sign's still up. Oh, it has to be, Irene. I can't bear to see that house sold till I've got the money to buy it. <laughs> oh, gee, she talks of buying a house, and we have 80 cents between us. Well, there's the down payment. That bunch of white paper with little black letters. Well, then, for heaven's sake, get out the pink tool and your feather bow. Put on that trick makeup you used to coerce the milkman into giving us credit, and start now. We haven't a minute to lose. Oh, Irene, be serious for just a minute. Kathy, when you're as old as I am, you'll know the one time never to be serious is when things are serious. And I suppose the only time to be tragic is when there's plenty of money in the bank and one looks one's best. Exactly. Only the very rich can afford to worry. But come on, honey, get your hat and let's get going. <laughs> <laughs> 
Where are you going? Public library. I don't want to face the landlord alone. Oh, Irene, let's walk past my house. Oh, all right. Oh, golly, I hope it isn't sold. Irene, I don't suppose you can possibly understand this, but, but owning that house means more to me than anything in the world. I know. Oh, it's... I can't really explain, even to you. Oh, I'm a nomad myself. Any place I happen to be is home, even a telephone booth. But I think I understand. A little. Irene, you've been a wonderful friend to me. I don't know what I'd have done without you this past year. I'd never have written the book. I know that. Oh, now, don't get sentimental. Oh, it makes me cry. <laughs> the dime store mascara I'm wearing the seasonal run at the first tier. Just the same, it's true. Well, all I hope is that Todd Farrell are intelligent enough to publish your book. Come on, honey. We've got to get there before somebody passes the law against women novelists. You bet. <laughs> There it is. And the sign's still up. Oh, you're really in love with it, aren't you? Just look how cheerfully those big windows gleam in the sun. And the brass knocker really shines like anything. It has an old world air. It looks as if it was meant for a home, Irene. Not just a stopping off place. Hey, look, Kathy, look. Below the for sale sign. Hostess wanted. Must have knowledge of antiques. Only a woman of breeding and intelligent need apply. Everett K. Gaylord, Realtor, 846 High Street. That's it. That's what? Well, they must want someone to help sell this house. Maybe they'll give you a room here. It's better than living in the street. Do you really think so? Oh, Irene, that would be too wonderful to be true. Oh, come on, we'll find out. The real estate office is on our way to Todd Farrell and... Oh, no. We... No, not me. No, I couldn't sell a house that I wanted. Oh, I couldn't bear it. All right. Let him pay you to discourage customers until your book is sold. Irene... You're a genius. Come on, let's hurry before someone beats me to the job. Mr. Gaylord? Yes? I, um, I, I saw your advertisement under the for sale sign of the house on Lakewood Drive. I, I came to apply. Uh, uh, do you know anything about antiques? I know a Chippendale from a Queen Anne. Uh, I, I know a little about porcelains and old glass. And I love that house, Mr. Gaylord. I pass it every day. It's beautiful. More beautiful than any house I've ever seen. <laughs> You'd like to own it yourself, eh? Oh, yes. But, but of course, there isn't a chance. Uh, you seem to have the proper appreciation of the property. It's not a new house, you know. It won't be easy to sell. Well, I'll tell you just what the proposition is. Uh, we want a girl to pretend that she's the owner. We'll find some excuse why she must sell. Uh, family moved east, anything. But it must be someone who understands the house, even loves it. And that I do, really. Yes, I can see that. You'd be living there, of course. Live there? Oh, that'd be wonderful. Your job would be to greet customers just as if it were your home. Sometimes that's an easier way to sell than uh, through your business office. Would you like the job? Would I like it? Oh, Mr. Gaylord, if, if I had the money, I, I think I'd pay you for the chance. Very well. The job is yours. You've exactly one month. If you sell it in that time, you'll receive two and a half percent of the sale price above your salary for the month. Uh, will you sign this paper, please? Oh, yes. And, of course, I'll have to have references. Well, that's perfectly all right. I have references. Oh, Mr. Gaylord... I feel as if I was signing a passport to heaven. Oh, Irene, it's wonderful. Imagine finishing my novel and moving into that house, all on the same day. What about the title of your manuscript? Irene, I've decided to call it The House on Lakewood Drive. Why, sure, that house inspired her to write the book in the first place. <laughs> Wouldn't that just be our luck? Rain. And no money for a taxi. No money for a streetcar, even. Oh, I don't mind getting wet. I wouldn't mind either if it wasn't for my shoes. The only pair I got left. They've got to get me over to my sister-in-law's. Well, we just can't stand here in this corner forever. Mm -hmm. The gutter's a young Mississippi. What are we going to do, swim it? Oh, this is our lucky day. Someone will come up. Oh, oh stop 
something did oh, come I up. mean that car. Oh, the Johnstown flood. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, girls. I didn't mean to splash you. Well, in that case, go back and try it over again, young man. Only bring us an ark next time. I can't bring back the ark, but I could offer you a reasonable facsimile, this chariot I'm driving. Well, it'll do in a pinch. Come on, Kathy. Oh, no, I... Oh, come on. Don't be silly. Get in. Please, yes, get in. Oh, good. Oh. Ah, are you comfortable? Fine. You know, I'd ride in a covered wagon on a day like this. <laughs> My name's Irene. Hers is Kathy. Oh, mine is it. Hey, what the... Oh. Close shave. Young man, keep your eyes on the road. We'll do the talking. Uh, is it too much to ask where I can drop you girls off? Uh, at the Tate building, uh, please. On the way, you can stop at the public library. I've got a date with a book. <laughs> First stop, ladies, public library. Thanks. See you at the house, honey. Good luck on the book. Give it to Todd Farrell with my love. Goodbye, Irene. Bye. Todd Farrell? Isn't that a book publisher? Oh, yes. Uh, they're my publishers. I'm just dropping off the manuscript of my newest novel. Oh, really? Uh, for publishers, they're really very intelligent. You uh, write a lot? Then? Oh, yes, and... Uh, there's the tape building. You can let me out there. Oh, I certainly. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I've always wanted to meet a real author. Uh, excuse me, I mean an authoress. Oh, we're just, just like other people, really. Kathy, I'd like to go on record saying that you're not like any other people I've ever seen. In fact, I think you're something rather special. Goodbye. It's very nice of you to give us the lift, and... Thank you. Oh, uh, oh, wait a minute. Wait, I don't know your last name, and you don't know mine, and well, I... Well, just read the bestseller list next season. The title of my book will be The House on Lakewood Drive. We pause briefly from our story, The House on Lakewood Drive, starring Angela Lansbury, to bring you an important message from your government. Protector of democracy and the free way of life, that's your U.S. Air Force man. But he's more than that. He's a man who's going places in his job because he has picked for himself the most modern of careers, a career in aviation. Your Air Force man is learning and working at some valuable phase of aviation. Perhaps he's studying jet propulsion, or mastering the know-how of airplane engines. There are any number of skills he might be studying, all valuable and all interesting, and he's paid well right from the day he enlists in the Air Force. The ambitious man, the one who wants to get ahead, is finding he has plenty of chances for advancement, too. Yes, your Air Force man is really, too. He's a symbol of free government, and at the same time, a man in a career with a future. Ask at your nearest recruiting station today about the fine young men in your United States Air Force. Our curtain rises on Act Two of The House on Lakewood Drive, starring Angela Lansbury as Kathy Lane. It's the last day of the month, and I suppose such things could only happen ten years ago, the time of our story. House seekers, discriminating in particular, have come and gone. But still no one has bought the lovely old house on Lakewood Drive. Nor has Kathy Lane heard from the publishers, Todd Farrell, about her book. She's not very happy girl at all, as she faces Everett K. Gaylord, realtor for the house. I just don't understand it, Mr. Gaylord. It is such a beautiful house, but nobody seems to want it. That is, nobody but me, and I can't afford it. Well, my dear... It is like a great many precious things in this world. Only the very few appreciate them. That is why perhaps they are precious. They all say the house is old-fashioned. They want glass, brick, and air conditioning. Those things don't make a home, Mr. Gaylord. <laughs> You're quite right, my dear. Well, you tried. I appreciate very much your efforts. And I'm sorry that I can't continue our arrangements past tomorrow. You mean my, my month is up then? Tomorrow night at exactly six o'clock. Oh. So, if you are to earn a commission, you must make a sale sometime between now and then. And and you wouldn't want to keep me on another month. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Lane, but that would be impossible. You've done your best, but I must ask you to bring me the key after you close the house tomorrow night. Very well, Mr. Gaylord. I, I can only hope that something will happen between now and then. Oh, you never can tell, my dear. 
The unexpected sometimes happens. <laughs> Well, honey, I've got to be running along. I'm supposed to be downtown at 6. I haven't much time. Neither have I. Oh, Irene, I just can't understand why I've had no luck. I'm jinxed, I think. I've heard nothing from the publishers. I guess they don't want the book. Well, no news is good news, I always say. And nobody wants to buy the house. Oh, I thought you didn't want to sell it. Oh, it's different now. I'll never have any money to buy it myself. I'd like to make the commission. Oh, Irene, I'm so blue I could cry. Oh, honey, don't worry. A whole month and not a word. A whole month. Think of it. No one wanting this house. And it is such a beautiful house. I'm more in love with it than ever before. No news is good news, they always say. And, hey, there's a car stopping out front. Maybe you got a customer. Oh, I hope so. We could certainly use that commission. <laughs> well, I'll be moving on, dear. I got a lot to do, and look who's coming up the walk. Oh, Sir Walter Raleigh in suntan. Oh, my, he'd look cute in technicolor. Why, it's the man that gave us the lift. Maybe this is the beginning of true love. Do I look all right? Oh, pretty as a picture. How do you do? Hello. Hi. Oh, sort of a family reunion, isn't it? Mm, this part of the family's taken wing. Won't you come in? Sir Walter Raleigh, we call you. Well, ta-ta. Uh, ta-ta. Goodbye, Irene. <laughs> Quite a character, your friend. Oh, she always makes a joke of everything. When you're blue, she's the best lift in the world. I bet. Well, um, did you come to see me or the house? Both, Kathy. You see, I didn't catch on at first. The title of your book was This House. Oh, yes. It, it's my old family home. Oh? Yes, I was born here. My mother and my grandmother before me. It's been in our family for generations. Oh, it's a lovely place. You, um... You aren't interested in buying a house, are you? Well, you know that's quite a coincidence. I am. Oh, then may I show you through? It's for sale. I suppose you noticed the sign on the outside. Yes, yes, I did. Uh, I wondered also why anybody would want to sell so lovely a house. I, uh, well, it, it's a personal problem. I wouldn't want to bore you with it. Now, this is the entrance hall. Attractive, isn't it? Oh, yes, charming. Look, isn't there some way that you could solve this personal problem of yours without selling your family home? At the moment, no. It's, uh, it's just one of those problems. Uh, as I was saying about the entrance hall, it's just the way a hall should be, don't you think? How should a hall be? Oh, friendly and inviting, yet not too familiar. Oh. And the living room. Lovely old pieces, don't you think? They belong to my grandmother. Oh, you don't say. Museum pieces, really. And this room, it's so charming, particularly this time of day. I think it's so nice to have it attractive at tea time. Of course, I know that's old-fashioned, and you probably don't care at all for tea. Oh, but I do, I do. In fact, I'm always in a bad humor when I miss my tea. I'm glad. We have something in common, then. Well, Kathy, I think perhaps we could find a lot in common if we tried. You know, I've been thinking a lot about you since the day I let you off at the Tate building. Well, I... That was a month ago. Well, I've been away. You see, I left that day for the West Coast, and I didn't get back until yesterday. Otherwise, I'd, well, I'd have been here much sooner. Oh. Well, um, this is the drawing room. Notice this cabinet? Yes, early colonial. Should be in a museum. Uh, and this ottoman? Priceless. How did you know? Oh, I've been out with a lot of antiques in my time. Oh, <laughs> now you're making fun of me. <laughs> Told you I'm always in a bad humor till I've had my tea. You mean you're really serious about the tea? Well, if it isn't too much trouble. Oh, by the way, you haven't any husbands hidden under these antimacassars, have you? Not a husband anywhere. Yeah, absolutely perfect. They always say they spoil a man's tea. Indeed. <laughs> you know, seriously, I don't see how a girl as attractive as you are has been able to isolate herself. Well, every man that's wanted to marry me has always insisted upon moving up to the best new district in town. A new house, a smart new address, the latest gadgets. And you, and Kathy? I don't want those things. You see, I love old things, beautiful things. I want a house that can be a home. I want to tell you something. Today when I walked in here, I, I stepped from one world to another. It was just as if I'd walked into an enchanted room. And you were part of that enchantment. 
Caddy, this room without you would be as cold and dull as a, as a museum. Unfortunately, I don't go with the house. Then it shouldn't be sold. But it must. Oh, you belong here. You, you, you've made it part of yourself. It, it, it is a part of you. You should stay here and write, Kathy. Write of real and lovely things like, like yourself to bring reality to others. Oh, no one will listen. No one will read. But they will, they will. Oh, Kathy, make the world know that there are rooms like this to be lived in and women like you to make them livable. You've such a lot to say. You must never stop saying it. Oh, why did you come? Why didn't you just come and look at the house and go away? Then I could go on letting you believe my fraud. But now I can't. I've got to tell you the truth. What do you mean? I've lied to you from the first day I met you. I've never had a line of my work published. This is not my house. I work here. I'm a sort of resident agent for Everett K. Gaylord. Well, 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 well. You don't say. And I love this house. I'd hope the publishers would buy my book and then I could buy the house myself. Ever since the for sale sign has been on it, I've prayed it wouldn't be sold. But now, it's all over. You see, it's nearly six o'clock. That means I'm out of a job. If you want the house, I mean really want it, Buy it now before six or I'll lose the commission. And I do need that money. Uh, Kathy, I have a confession to make also. I'm a fraud, too. What? I'm John Farrell of Todd Farrell Publishers. No. Yes, yes. You see, we've just bought a first novel from a new writer. Her name is Kathy Lane. I've brought with me a check for advance royalties and a contract for her to sign. Believe it. Well, here's the check, here's the contract, and here's a pen. <laughs> Mr. Farrell is really quite enthusiastic about Miss Lane's writing. Uh, for a publisher, you see, oh. Mr. Farrell is really quite intelligent. Oh, no, no, you're making fun of me. Does a thousand dollars look like a joke? A thousand dollars? Oh, my goodness. Well, then I can almost buy the house myself. Oh, no, no, Miss Lane, the clock has struck six o'clock. <laughs> you're out of a job. Oh, it doesn't matter, I can still buy the house. I'm sorry, but you can't. The house is no longer for sale. But that's up to Everett K. Gaylord. No, no, Kathy, it isn't. It, it's up to me. <laughs> you see, I, I happen to be the owner of this house. You? <laughs> yes, I instructed Gaylord not to give out the owner's name because I didn't want to be bothered. And when you told me the title of your book and when I saw the address on the manuscript, I was intrigued. Then, then it's all been a game. Yes, but a wonderful game. Oh, Kathy, I've learned a lot this afternoon. I, I, I learned before it was too late that if I lost this house, I lost part of myself, part of, of, of my heritage. If, if you really feel that way, Mr. Farrell, I, I don't mind losing the house. Of course, if you wanted it very badly, it might be arranged. But how? I mean, Well, I... There'd, there'd be a small clause in the contract. The, uh... The owner would have to go with the house. Well, well, this is so quick, Mr. Farrell. Well, after all, a, a girl doesn't get a novel sold and acquire a, uh, well, anyway, it seems to, it seems like an awful lot has happened today. <laughs> well, look, look, suppose we close up shop, go to dinner, someplace quiet where we can talk and, and, and plan. I want to please the new tenant if the new tenant chooses to move in. I should be delighted to have dinner with you, Mr. Farrell. And I know, of course, that a new tenant has to put up with something or other. Oh, oh yes, yes, that usually happens. Usually it's the plumbing. The plumbing. But maybe the owners are much less difficult. <laughs> curtain falls in the final act of The House on Lakewood Drive. Our star, Angela Lansbury, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Veterans, do you know the four doors of opportunity for you? Well, just listen to what the U.S. Army has to offer you. First, your choice of unit in the United States. Yes, if you have served abroad after September 2nd, 1945, you may enlist for any one of nine well-known Army outfits, and they're stationed at posts all over this country. Here's another great opportunity. Many of you veterans will be able to enlist in grade depending on your former grade and length of service. And veterans, 
That will mean to you more responsible positions and higher pay. Door number three is this. Only you veterans can enlist for duty in Europe. Or you can choose assignment to one of the famous U.S. Army divisions in the Far East. And here's another opportunity. If you have a high school education, you can choose your Army Technical School. Veterans, why don't you talk it over at your recruiting station now? The men there will be glad to advise you. Now back at the microphone, our star, Angela Lansbury, and our producer. A deserving call for a brilliant performance, Angela. Come out and take a bow. I know our listeners welcome you back again to Proudly We Hail. It's always a treat to appear in your theater of stars, C.P. Remember last time we discussed you, the couturier for Angela Lansbury. Yes, the new look, which was somewhat controversial at the time. It was highly pleasing, especially to the ladies of our audience. And you know... The views you expressed to me just before curtain time should be especially interesting to everyone. Oh, you mean the exchange of stars? Yes. Well, you see, there has been more or less of an exchange between our country and Great Britain for some time. I can think of many advantages to be gained through such an exchange between us and France, Sweden, Italy, for example. There is some talk about a picture to be made in India by one of our producers. That's it. He and his staff will produce the picture, but he will use as many Indian actors and actresses as possible. There is excellent talent over there. That may be discovered and then brought over here. Yes, you see, such an exchange will give our own people opportunities also to appear in foreign productions. I think it will broaden culture and at the same time assist in a greater international understanding. And uh, what do you think the theater goer's reaction will be here, Angela? Well, of course, Americans have their favorites. But I feel that the reaction will be rather stimulating, that they will be pleased to see new faces, to observe the differences in technique, etc., and in the way of doing things. Well, Angela... When this comes about, we'll remember your timely thoughts on the subject. By the way, C.P., I understand you have a very special treat for us next week. Next week, Angela, and ladies and gentlemen, we present one of our greatest actresses, Miss Billy Burke, who appears in our comedy, The Fabulous Deliers. Oh, that'll be perfect for your listeners. And I'll be dialing your way as usual, C.P. Goodbye. Goodbye, Angela. <laughs> Goodbye. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we present Billy Burke in The Fabulous Deliers. Until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Angela Lansbury appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The orchestra is directed by Eddie Scrivani. This program is rebroadcast to the armed forces overseas to the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, Proudly We Hail next week presents Billy Burke. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.